guys, welcome to the Vertical Life Church online experience. I'm Kelly and I'm so excited to welcome you to our global community. We want to awaken and empower you in your walk with Jesus. And so we're gonna bring you some powerful worship and an awesome message. Check it out. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, hail back the waters for my release. Oh yeah.
second. We're not in a hurry. And I just wanna just be thankful for just a minute. Go ahead and call to mind the things he brought you through. Go ahead and call to mind the time when it seemed like nothing was gonna work out and then it did. And it was better than you expected. Go ahead and call to mind the time that you held something so deep inside because you were so afraid. If you brought it, it would be, it would be the end of you. But you brought it and God saw it and he loved you. Just let thankfulness just, just well up inside of you just right now. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yeah. 
We're so glad to have you as a part of our online family today. We couldn't put on this experience without your generosity and support. If you'd like to partner with us as we continue to spread the gospel, there are two ways that you can give at Vertical Life. You can text any amount to 84321, or you can go to verticallife.info and click give. We believe that God has something awesome to teach us today, so let's prepare our hearts as we continue in our service with an awesome message. I'm very excited to, uh, to close out our series in James today, which um, I've loved the series. I have loved how, I don't like confrontation, but I like how confrontational the book of James has been. We've been talking about this from the beginning. It's kind of like these modern day proverbs that confront the way that we are living. And the goal is to be conformed to Jesus, right? God's goal is to form us to look more like Jesus in every way. In fact, that's what Paul said to the Galatians. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, Paul said that he is laboring with the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in the Galatians. What I know to be true about you and me is that God wants to form us to look like Jesus and smell like Jesus and think like Jesus and respond like Jesus, decide like Jesus, forgive like him, love like him, walk in power and authority like Jesus. God is trying to conform us to the image of Jesus in all areas of our life, right? And the way that he does that oftentimes is started with an invitation. God comes and he speaks something to us. He invites us into something. And when we respond with faith and obedience, when we come to him with a yes on his terms, that is typically when we enter into some kind of kingdom process that's like stuff being cut out of our lives, like being pruned. Like we're this lump of clay and like the potter is like beating the lump of clay to make it pliable, to turn it into what he wants to turn it into. Like the idea of a hammer and a chisel, he's chiseling things out of our life. He's pressing us like grapes to form new wine. All the process words of the kingdom are painful and they're uncomfortable. But what they do when we say yes to God's invitations is we enter into more relationship with him. We build more history with him. We build more trust with him. And oftentimes there's things that he has to do in us in order to accomplish things through us. And I know for a fact that right now, the people in this room, God is trying to do new things and more things in you so that you can have deeper and more intimate communion and fellowship with him. And so he can build his kingdom in your life and through your life. And because that starts with an invitation a lot of times, that's what I feel like this series has been. There's just been so many invitations for us to look at our lives, figure out where we're not conformed to Christ, and make a decision if we want to repent, change our minds, and go in the direction of the kingdom. And I feel like today that is um, an opportunity that we are going to have again. I believe there's going to be an invitation from God today. And if we will respond, he will move as he always does because he is faithful. And so what we're going to do, we're going to read James chapter five. We're closing it out, starting in verse 13. If you would please stand with me for the reading of the word of God. This is what it says from James, the brother of Jesus. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God because his word is good, right? 
So the first thing that I notice when I read this passage, like the thing that to me stands out above everything else that kind of jumps off the page is the connection that James makes between sin and sickness. Like, look at what he says. He says in verse 14, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed sins, he'll be forgiven. So because that's all true, because the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and if he's committed sins, he'll be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you will be healed from the thing that is making you sick. Like you see the connection that he makes between sin and sickness. And for us, that may cause a couple questions to rise up inside of us, but what I want you to know is that a Jewish mindset was that sickness and lack was a result of being cursed by God. And abundance and health was a result of being blessed by God. This was the mindset that they lived in. You can see this in John chapter 9. There's a story where a man is brought to Jesus who was born blind, and the disciples look at him and they say, so who sinned? Did he sin or did his parents sin? What I want you to see is the mindset. Someone comes who has an ailment, they have a sickness, and the immediate thought process of the disciples was, well, this guy is blind, he's sick, so who's the one that sinned? Because this is a result of sin. Is it because his parents sinned? Or is it because he sinned? This was the Jewish mindset. The reason that this was their mindset is the nation of Israel has a very rich history that has been written down and passed down orally for generations. And you got to understand that all of the judges, all of the kings, all of the prophets all said the same thing. If you obey God, he'll bless you. But if you don't obey God, he'll curse you. So Deuteronomy 28 is a passage that I want to read real quick. This is Moses talking to the Israelites. This is before they go into the promised land. I, I, just, I want you to see it's important to understand this concept if we're going to understand this passage, the connection between sin and sickness, between sin and suffering, between sin and lacking. So this is what Moses says. He said, if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set him high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They will come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. And then you read from verse eight all the way down to verse 14. It's just constant. Like if you obey me, I'm gonna bless you in this way. I'm gonna bless you, I'm gonna bless you, I'm gonna bless you. But I want you to see something starting in verse 15. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today, in other words, if you sin, if you go against the author of life's prescription for life, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. Look at verse 20. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, and frustration in all that you undertake to do until you are destroyed and perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. So there's a Jewish understanding and mindset that sin results in sickness. And what I have observed through sitting down and talking with many people is that this is still true today. 
the sickness that we have in our lives, the mental sickness, the emotional sickness, the physical sickness, the spiritual sickness, it is a result of sin. Now, what I'm not saying is that if you have a cold, it's because you sinned and God gave you a virus. Like, I'm not saying that if you were playing soccer and you fell down, and you tore your ACL, that God was like, well, you know, you said something mean to your kid, so bam, take that. Like, God's not doing daily performance reviews in heaven and checking off his little list and saying, okay, I can give some, I can give some blessing today. Nope, today it wasn't very good. I'm going to have to give some cursing. I'm not talking about punishment. What I am saying is that the decisions that I make with my life impact my life. The decisions that I make with my life will impact the people who are under my authority in my life, mainly my wife and my children. The decisions that you make with your life will impact you. The decisions that the authority that you sat under, your parents, maybe teachers, coaches, the People you sat under made decisions as you were growing up in this world, and those decisions and those things that were done have very real consequences for you in your life. This is why experience and words shape us. We are formed by what we experience in life. We are formed and shaped by what is spoken over us in this life. I grew up hearing sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not in your Bible, guys. The Bible says that death, death, and life are in the power of your tongue. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. Words are so powerful. Experiences are so powerful, especially when we're young children. We're being molded and shaped by the environment that we grow up in and the decisions that we've made in life and the decisions that people around us have made result in sickness. It results in mental sickness, physical sickness. It results in emotional sickness, spiritual sickness. And so, this is what I've learned about people. This is what I've learned about human beings. I've learned that we carry things that we were never meant to carry. We carry things through life that God never intended for us to carry. Like you might've grown up in a home where there was abuse in your home. There might've been sexual abuse in your home when you were a child. Maybe it was from a family member, a close a relative. Maybe it was from a parent. And because of that abuse, you do not trust fathers or you do not trust men. Or maybe you feel like you're dirty because of what happened. Maybe because of your abuse, you were made to believe that it was your fault. And you have felt guilty from that experience for the rest of your life. Maybe in your home, there were very harmful words that were used against you. Words are so incredibly powerful. Maybe you were told that you're ugly. Maybe you were told that you're clumsy. Why are you always making mistakes? Why are you always getting hurt? Maybe you were told like, why can't you ever be like, fill in the blank, another sibling? Why do you always mess everything up? And those are powerful. Those spoken words are what the Bible calls curses. And they carry very real world spiritual weight. A friend of mine, she was raised by someone that wasn't her parents. And as I was getting to know her, she was getting fired from job after job after job. She was getting fired by all these jobs. And she kept saying, I'm not doing anything wrong. And I'm like, I think you might have kind of a big blind spot because the common denominator is you. Like you're getting fired by all these different people. I just think you're not seeing something. And then one night we were talking and she told me that the person who raised her used to tell her over and over and over and over for years, you'll never amount to 50 cents. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, that's a curse. That is the reason you keep getting fired. And so we broke the curse in the name of Jesus. It wasn't this big fancy thing. It took like a minute. We broke the curse in Jesus' name. Within a month, she had a higher paying job than she'd ever have, and she never lost it. I know that you guys might not think that this stuff is real, 
but words carry real weight. I know people who get in constant accidents, but they were told their whole life as a child that they're clumsy and they still get in accidents and they still have things that happen to them. It's because it's real. Maybe you grew up in a home where there was neglect. You just don't feel valuable. To this day, you feel like you have to earn your value somewhere. Maybe your parents had a, it was a very legalistic environment. And so you had to perform in a certain way in order to be accepted. And you still carry that to this day. And it's still part of who you are because it now it's influencing you and your relationship with God. The things that we experience, the things that are spoken over us, it's real and we carry it through life. And so then maybe you get to your teenage years and like, like me, like so many people, maybe you turn into this rebellious teenager where your parents don't know anything and you're just going to go do your own thing. And so you get connected with a crowd of people that maybe isn't the best. And so you start drinking a little bit. Maybe you start doing drugs. Maybe you do some hard drugs and you can believe this or you don't have to believe this, but certain drugs open you up spiritually to the, to the influence of the devil. When we open ourselves up, by trying to experience something outside of God's design, we open ourselves up to the spiritual forces of darkness. And those things now have permission to influence us and oppress us. Maybe you started sleeping around. You started having premarital sex with people. And what did you do? You were entering into contracts that still carry very real weight today. The two become one flesh in sexual intercourse, and now you're one flesh with 20 people, 30 people, 40 people, and you're carrying that through life. Maybe just hanging out with your friends, like just, you know, we're just some teenagers, we're just having fun, and someone busts out like some tarot cards or a Ouija board, or you go to, you go to like the psychic or this palm reader because it's, it's fun and it's exciting, and you have just opened yourself up for the devil to oppress you until the access that he was given in that moment, in innocence, not even knowing what you were doing, you gave access to the devil and his kingdom. And you're still experiencing the torment and the results of the legal access that you gave to the devil. I'm telling you, it's real. And so maybe you get to your 20s, you're a professional now, and you're kind of starting to think about your Life, you're starting to look at yourself. You see all the self-help stuff that's all on social media. And you're like, I think maybe I have some issues. And so you, you start thinking about your past and you start thinking about the way that you were raised and you realize that maybe you weren't given the best chance in life. Maybe you realize, like, I was not treated the way that a child should be treated. And so what do you do? Tack on some unforgiveness to your parents and some bitterness you didn't treat me the way that I should have been treated. And you carry that unforgiveness through your life. You start comparing yourself to people around you. You realize that you're not as successful as other people are. And so then all the things that were spoken over you as you were a child, you'll never amount to anything. You actually start to believe it even more because if it weren't true, then I would be fill in the blank. And so then you get to your 30s. And life's looking real good on the outside. Like you have your kids, you have your house, you have your car, you have your job, you coach the soccer team, you come to church, like you look nice. But really on the inside, you're dead because you're carrying things that you were never meant to carry. So it used to be a glass of wine a couple times a week. It's like a bottle a night. Maybe you're smoking some weed just to try and numb the pain from the things that you've experienced in your life because life's not exciting, because it's just about going to work every day, coming home, taking care of the kids. You find some excitement by hiding and watching some porn somewhere over here. Maybe you enter into an adulterous relationship over here because it's what makes you feel alive. And so what do we do? Come on. We throw on more hurt. We throw on more pain. And it is a result of sin. Sin that we commit and sin that is committed against us. And this is how we walk through life. Because when we experience these things and when people speak these things over us, we allow it to become who we are. You, I, cannot, I can't view or think about or experience anything 
outside of the lens of this junk is heavy. And we can't, everything that we do, say, think, our lives are lived through this. Because you, it's here. It's not going anywhere until I do something about it. And what we do is we bear the weight of our sin on our bodies. But like Kelly read, Jesus came and said, I'm going to bear your sin in my body on a tree so that we, having died to sin, can live to righteousness. And what? By his stripes, we are healed. But so many of us bear the weight of sin. And so what does the devil want us to do? And what do we play right into? We keep it internalized. We don't talk about this. I don't walk into church and I'm like, hey, Haley, how you doing? Just want to let you know I cheated on my wife last night. Like we don't lead with that stuff. This is the stuff that we're ashamed of. This is the stuff that we don't want anyone to know. And so we keep it in the dark. We keep it hidden. We're forced to deal with it mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, all by ourselves. And that's where the devil does his best work is when you are isolated and you keep things hidden. That's when we believe the lies that he whispers to us that this is just who you are. This will never change. You are a mistake. There's, you don't even need to be here. In fact, the world would probably be better if you weren't here. We begin to listen to that stuff and we begin to believe that stuff as we carry the weight that we were never meant to carry. But what did Jesus say? He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He wants to carry this weight because we were never meant to carry it. And so what is James saying? James I love this. What does he say? Confess your sins one to another and pray for each other that you may be healed. For the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. This is so important. The confession of sin to other people is so important. And this is why. There are people in here who have done things that you're not proud of and you've confessed it to God over and over and over and over again, but you are still walking in the sickness and the brokenness of the sin. Why? 1 John 1, 9 says, confess your sin to God and he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Confession to God results in forgiveness. Confession to other people results in healing. Why? Because we're the body of Christ. We're being vulnerable together. We're coming to other people with the things that we do not want to say, and we say them. We say, I was molested when I was a kid. I've never told anybody that. I didn't think it had any effect on me, but I have shame. I don't want to tell you. I don't want to say that. We come and we, we confess these things, and what it is, is, is it literally is the weight is gone. When we bring it into the light, it is impossible for the darkness to remain. Darkness stands zero chance against light. And there are things that we have hidden inside that we've never confessed, that we've never shared. It's in the dark. And it is what gives the devil the ability to administer guilt and shame and fear and hopelessness. We are sick because of our sin. But James is here to say, we can be healed. And it comes by getting over ourselves, over the facade that we're good, that we don't have any issues, and actually taking a step of faith to verbalize the things that we have never verbalized before to another brother or sister so that we can lay our hands on each other, speak truth to the lies, and pray for healing. And what will happen? The prayer of faith will heal the one who is sick. It doesn't say it might. It doesn't say it could. It says that it will. It says that it will heal the one who is sick. I cannot tell you how many people I've sat across the table with who they're carrying things. They've never verbalized it to anyone. 
And it is so hard for them to actually say, but when they actually say it, the freedom and the deliverance that happens is visibly tangible to anyone who's watching. I don't care if you don't believe that the, de the devil can oppress Christians. I don't care if you don't believe that. I don't care if you, if you it's, it's very real and it's very tangible to see with your eye. And there are people here who are sick and enslaved to things that happened to them and things that you did in the past, but the gospel says you can be free. So what's the thing that makes this so, so powerful? It's prayer. Prayer is so powerful. When we come to God in faith with this stuff and we pray, there is great power in it. This whole last section of James, I know we've been talking about confession. It's all about prayer. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let's sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let's call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed sins, he'll be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Why? The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it was working. And then it talks about how Elijah prayed and things shifted. And then it talks about how he prayed again and things shifted. Prayer, when we come vulnerable and we confess these things to other people and we lay our hands on each other and pray for each other and speak truth to the lies that you've believe, been believing in secret, there is healing. It is so, so powerful. And so the question is, what are you carrying that you have never told a soul? You already know what it is. You know exactly what it is. You know the thing that you don't want anyone else to know. And the fact that you don't want anyone to know it is proof that you have shame associated with it. And Jesus came to bear all of that for us. So why would you carry it longer than the next five minutes? Healing is available. Freedom is available. Deliverance is available. If we'll say yes to God on his terms. And this is what the devil is saying to so many of you right now. I know exactly how he works. He's telling you, that thing is not that big of a deal. Like you don't, you don't need to confess that. Like that's not that big of a deal. If that's what you're hearing, anything that you're hearing in your head right now that's leading you to not confess is the devil. Right now. Like nothing you really, nothing will actually change if you just tell someone this. Nothing's gonna change. Or if you tell people this, they're gonna kick you out of church. People who do stuff like this can't be in church like this. If you confess that, you'll, lo you'll lose your marriage. If you confess that, you'll lose your children. I'm not telling you if you're living in adultery to turn to your spouse right now and say, just let you know I'm sleeping with a neighbor. I'm not telling you to do that. There is an appropriate way to confess those types of things to the people that we are hurting. And we have programs at this church in place to help you walk through that. I'm saying that the prayer team, you can go ahead and come on up right now. The prayer team is here for you to come up and confess the things that you do not want people to know about you. Because if you think it in your head, I promise you, it is weighing you down. If you don't want to say it, it is the thing that the devil is using to keep you hopeless and discouraged and suicidal and oppressed and enslaved. And so the question for everyone, just like James, is any among you sick? If your answer is yes, you don't have to be. Why don't you guys stand with me the worship team is going to lead us and we want to give you an opportunity for confession. 
Listen, we exist as a church all the time to awaken and empower you to follow Jesus. We exist for Christ to be formed in you. And one of the things, if not the thing, I don't know, that is holding you back from Christ being formed in you is the things that you're carrying that Jesus said, I wanna carry for you. So stop letting it weigh you down. Which drop to your knees and let him carry it. And so look, I know what's going on inside of you right now. I know, I know that you're thinking, you're like, dang, I, I've never told anyone this. I don't wanna carry this anymore, but as soon as I walk out of my row, everyone in this place is gonna know that. Yeah. We're gonna have to lose some dignity. We're gonna have to learn to be uncomfortable, learn to take risk, to walk in obedience, to follow him. Most of the time, what needs to get out of the way is our flesh and our high opinion of ourselves. If I'm just being real, and I'm trying to be real because I love you, and I know how this stuff holds us back from what God wants for us. So they're gonna lead us the altar is open for you to walk up here and offload some things that you were never meant to carry. And there's freedom and there's healing and it's powerful. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that today's service was an encouragement and a blessing to you. And we would love for you to share it with your friends and family. If you have any prayer requests, testimonies, or anything you'd like to share, send us an email at hello at verticallife.church or reach out to us on any of our social media platforms. We hope you guys have an awesome week. See you next time.